Hi guys, in today's review we'll be looking at this all new Hornby Era 1 locomotive and this is the LNR Centenary 1930 Lion Train Pack Era 1 and the code you need for this is R30232 and this was announced this year, Hornby announced they were doing it in, in the summer actually of 2022 and it's here now in end of September some turnaround that is. So in this review we'll see if it's worth the money and it, does it stand up to modern day locomotives and let's see what features it has shall we. So here goes. Before we get to look at the detail bags and the loco pack itself the box it came in is very old-fashioned and very suitable for this era of locomotive. You do get a lovely picture of the locomotive on the front of the real life and you also get some lovely framing around it. And inside you get a little bit of history, which is great, I like history. And then the loco comes in a foam styled packaging. And carefully wrapped in that is the loco and the three coaches. And at the top in the corner you have your details. You do get a plastic glass to look through when you open it like a book, which is fantastic, a bit like the rocket. As for detail parts you get, you get the crew, which is basically the fireman and the driver in period clothing and painted. And you also get the Hornby style Ear One couplings that I'm not a big fan of. But you get them and they're all in receivable bags as well. As we move on to the front of the locomotive now. And I've got to be honest with you guys, this front of the locomotive has blown me away. Actually the whole locomotive as if I'm honest with you. We do have buffers and I think they're metal actually but they're not sprung. They're metal of the era. We also have a metal chain link and a hook as well. Separately applied as well, that's fantastic. As we go down just a little bit, there's no front coupler or anything like this here or one side or anything like that. But what we do have is some cylinders under there, as well as some, I think they're drain cocks taps to let stuff out there in gold. I picked out in gold, that is really, really fantastic. Lots of detail. We also have, as we move on up, we also have the smoke box door, I want to say, for the era, which looks separate applied as well. And it does have a small handrail on there too, right in the center. We also have some molded detail on there as well. It's all in black, may I add. Then we have this big chimney and it's die cast. And we have real metal at the top. And if you look down that, you can see some stuff down, down the chimney as well. Not a smoke generator or anything like that. The workings of a chimney, I guess it is. A bit like Hornby do on their Merchant Navy classes. That is fantastic. Now as we move on to the side of this fantastic locomotive, to me both sides are exactly the same apart from in the cab or the driver's area I want to say. We'll get into that in a minute. This being a Liverpool and Manchester Railway locomotive, the wheel configuration for this locomotive is a 042. The wheels are in a green. We do have some gold lining on the wheels as well as all wheels, the driving wheels and the ones under the cab and the ones on the tender too. We also have a rod. I think it's plastic, but it's well done. You can't tell it's plastic. We have outside motion, a bit like um, a Great Western City class. We have the splashes and springs above it. They are in green as well, and the, the springs are in black. The splashes do have some gold lining on them. We also have this die cast metal chassis or running board, depending on your preference. And that is also on the tender as well. And it's in an Indian red colour scheme. Moving on up past the splashes, we have this fantastic boiler barrel, wood effect going on. And the more I look at this barrel, the more I see new stuff on it. Bits of wood detail as well going on there too. We also have some lining on this boiler barrel from the chimney all the way to the haystack firebox. And they are metal strips on there as well, yes. Very shiny, very nice. I think they're meant to be copper, but they look gold. It simply looks stunning to me. We do have a name for this locomotive. And this name is Lion. And that looks to be separately applied as well. Very nice printing on that, if I'm honest. The number for this locomotive is 57. We do have some lubrication. I think as they are on one of the splashes next to the nameplate. And we have some sort of bracing as well. I've got this correct. This being 1930s condition. We do have a wood effect on the haystack style firebox, as well as a copper finish to it as well. If we move to where the crew would be, we do have a fine, fine step there. Correct for the period, I believe. We also have the running board color as well, being Indian red. We have the wheel as well in the green. We also have some amazing underframe detail all around this locomotive. As we move on up, 
We do have a small handrail. We also have a balcony style lookout for the crew. There's no cab as such. And that is in the green and that is die cast. And we also have some black fancy decoration on there as well. We also have a running board between the tender and locomotive. As we move on to the part most people look forward to in a modern day steam locomotive review and that will be the driver's area or the cab area and also the front of the tender. Hornby have not let us down on such a small locomotive. The cab detail or the driver area detail here is fantastic. More than I expected if I'm honest with you. We do have, like I said before, we have a haystack styled firebox which is meant to be copper in real life. I believe we have a whistle and safety valve on top, if I have that correct. I believe the firebox cladding was mainly for show. I believe it had a lease firebox in there, if I have this correct. We do have some painted details, some separately applied stuff as well. We have a regulator, we have some dials. We also have, I think, a water gauge on there as well. It is very, very detailed. I think we have some rivets as well. And then earlier on, I did say there was some differences around the driver's area and that is correct as you look at the cab as you're driving it on the right hand side we seem to have some sort of handle don't know if it's for brakes or for water probably for one or the other that is there and that is separately applied as well like i said before on this locomotive we do have a slight wood effect going on in that area but it is black and it is hard to see we do have a I think it bends four plate going across from tender to locomotive and that fits snugly between both. Onto the front of the tender now. The front of the tender, we do have some small handrails. We also have most of the detail in black. We do have a coal in there as well, which is removable. And we also have some hinges going on with the four plate as well. As we move on now to the tender sides. Both sides of this tender are exactly the same for me. We do have it in this green with some black lining by the looks of it. We also have some rivets on there. Hopefully the pictures I put up will do justice. There's some rivets on there. It's quite nice. We also have it die cast. So is the chassis of the tender I want to call it in Indian red. It die cast as well. We have some black axle boxes. We also have the wheels again for this tender in that green, that lovely green of this locomotive. Again, I think they have lining on there as well. We also have some small handrails dotted around and then we have the buffers at the end. As we move on to the back of the tender, the back of the tender does have a few surprises that I didn't know this model had. And that is we have two little hooks down near the buffers and they look to be metal and it's a really, really nice touch. Took me by surprise. Moving on up, we do have the buffers like the front, I believe. They're... We also have a wood effect going on. And then we have the hook there for the Era 1 style coupler for the coaches that Hornby do. Moving on up, we do have a small handrail, I think, set applied on this tender. We also have some lining and rivets. Again, the back of this tender is fantastic. It's metal and it's in this green. It's fantastic green. Everywhere you look, there's something new to look at with this model. As we now do an aerial look on the tender, like I said before, this tender top is in black. We do have a water filler cap there with a separately applied handle, which is fantastic. We also have some molded hooks or chain hooks at the corner of the tenders. There's a few rivets dotted around. We have this nice slope for the coal load. Again, the coal load is removable, but I don't want to remove mine. At the side of the tender top, we do have some more details in black. Not quite sure what they are, so I do apologize. But everywhere you look on this tender, there's rivets everywhere. And then again, we have the floor, floor plate between loco and tender, which does have hinges on by the looks of it as well. As we do an air review on top of this locomotive now, like I said before, we do have a black floor on the cab area. We also have the safety valves and whistles as well on the haystack firebox with the copper effect going on. The top of the firebox itself is in black. And then we move across to this amazing wood effect that Hornby have going on on this locomotive with the gold banding. You can see a few of the stuff I was talking about earlier, which I think are bracing or lubricators on top of the splashes. Again, this wood effect does look amazing. I can't say enough good things about it. And then we move to the chimney. The chimney again is die cast, which is fantastic. And like I said before, you can see down, there's some stuff down there. I don't think my camera's gonna pick it up or not. And then we have the buffers at the front. As we do an underneath look at this locomotive, this locomotive does have some fantastic touches. 
We do have some underframe detail there. I believe it's painted on. I'm not too sure I've not touched it myself, which is fantastic. Wasn't expecting that. The last driving wheel does have the cog and it's a driven wheel and you can get to it and oil the cogs and stuff that you need to. I believe it's most of the wheels do have pickups somewhere. I haven't spotted them yet. We also have a plate coming off with one screw and in that plate is where your DCC decoder goes and you will need a next 18 pin DCC decoder in there. And that looks like it's quite easy to do. There should be a diagram on the screen now coming up. And then we have the, uh, the wheel underneath the cab. There is some other details dotted around on this under frame that I've missed. So every time I look at it, I see something new. And finally, for this locomotive, we move on to the loco and tender connection and the underneath of the tender. The loco and tender connection is the standard Hornby one. It's definitely better than the Rocket in my opinion. And that is a plastic bar going across with two holes if you want close coupling or not to loco tender. And the plug, which I think is fantastic. I do like this idea. You can also see some underframe details here as well. I think there's pickups on the tender wheels as well. And if you want to add sound, there is a pre-fitted speaker in the tender. That's why there's holes underneath the wheels at the back. It's a fantastic touch if you're into your DCCs and your sounds, that is great. Now as you move on to the coaches you get with this set, let's have a look at the front or back of the coach, depending on your preference. Here we have a, I think it's a third and a first class coach. Both basically the same with different details of the classes. So let's start with the blue one. The blue one does have plastic buffers. It also has the buffer beam in the blue. I want to call it a blue, but I'm not sure it is. We also have a hook in there as well. As we move up, we do have a wood panelling effect going on with a few bits of lining on that. As you tell, it is third class, I believe. It's more open. They didn't care about them the way I see it. Moving on to the first class. And the first class has a lot more separately applied details here in real life and the model. Again, we have the same style buffers like we do on the third, but they're in yellow with a black buffer. We have the hook in the center, again on both in black. We do have a fantastic yellow back going on here. We also have some steps for people to get up to put their luggage on the roofs. I believe these were mainly horse-drawn carriages that were converted, if I got that correct. There is some lining on here as well. Like I said, there's a lot of separately applied stuff on the first one than it is the third one. As we move on to the side of the first and third carriage, again, they're in the same livery. They both have separately applied steps in the correct livery and the step itself is in black. Again, with both of them, we also can see through, just above the wheels, through to the other side, and there's some mechanism under there. It doesn't work, but it's there for show. It looks fantastic. On the third one, we have the panelling and lining again. And it looks a little bit like a crown shape, the way it uses in and out at the top. Again, on the first and third, we do have separately applied handles by the looks of it, and they are painted in a gold colour, which is nice. The first ones are named, we have Traveller and Experience. I believe these two are different compared to the Rocket as far as I'm aware. They're definitely different names compared to mine that I have. Again, we do have windows in these first class because the companies look after the first class more than any other citizens back in the day. Again, both of the coaches, first class coach that is, do say Liverpool and Manchester on them. Crisply printed, may I add. We do have some black lining around the windows. The third and first do have metal wheels, I think they are painted or it could be silver. The first carriage does have seating, painted seating, and it looks like armchairs. Hopefully the picture I'm about to put up will do it justice. My camera skills aren't great, so I do apologize. Nothing's fallen off any of these coaches whatsoever, which is fantastic. As we do an air review on top of both of the coaches, like I said, the first and third, let's start with the third. As you can guess, it's open. What we do have in there is, I think a standing room only, but there is a wood effect going on. And the wood effect is quite nice. It's in like a brown color. Is there any way to describe it? Like when you painted the bench, it's in that sort of brown color. Very basic, very open. Moving on to the first class now. The first class roof, like I said, the carriages were horse-drawn carriages originally, so they have the place to put the 
suitcases or bags or whatever on top of the roof in the center. I believe we do have some sort of lighting system on there. There's three little dots and I think they're for the lighting system in real life. We have handrails for the staff to get up and down to put the luggage up there. And the roof is in like a gray color, gray cream color. And there's got a rib effect going across it where you put your luggage as well. And finally, as we do an underneath look at the carriages, as you see by the looks of this, both of them are exactly the same, or like all three are exactly the same underneath. We do have metal wheels. You can also see the steps as well. We do have two screws in the center to top or middle, if you know what I mean. They're in black, and I believe they're to take off the shell if you wanted to, for some reason. They are there. We also have some bracing and some suspension going on, and some metal work in there too, depending on which class it is, it's either in blue for third or yellow for the first class. But to me, they look exactly the same, but I could be wrong. Highly detailed either way. And sadly, the coaches are plastic. It's the only thing I got to say about it. So next up will be the usual points test. It's been a small locomotive. It might struggle on points, but very doubtful. And there's no point doing a second radius test because it can do first and it's really small too. So here it goes. Let's see how it gets on, shall we? Not bad, what's that? 30? It's not bad. We're quite a small locomotive. So you managed that pretty okay. I've got to be honest with you, we did stumble a little bit, but not much. Next will be slow speed and we'll get his train coupled up to it, shall we? Twenty, that is that's good look. Twenty. That's impressive. That's very nice.
So guys, that's the end of the review and the small running session there. I thought I'd stay with the train pack instead of adding the other coaches I've got. One day I might add the other coaches to it and see if it can pull it. For me, this is tons better than the Rocket. Nothing against the Rocket. There was one thing on the Rocket I wasn't a fan of. And on this, it's been fixed, which is great. Again, the money for the pack for me is the same price which you would pay for a locomotive. I paid £240 from Hornby themselves. And I think that's a, an okay price. It's a great price because you get, like I said, a full train basically for that price of a locomotive. And this locomotive is diecast as well. And Hornby have gone to a lot of trouble with this locomotive. It has pickups, it like a die cast, it has a detailed cab, it has under frame detail, which I miss in the detail parts. I just overran with all the detail that the locomotive had for such a tiny locomotive. We've also got the motion underneath, like I picked out in my uh, detail part, which it just did surprise me. And yeah, it is either separately applied or it's hatched. Really good, it's, it's metal, it's amazing. The DCC chipping is easy enough for, for anyone who, who does that sort of stuff. And it comes with a speaker as well in, in the tender. For me, it's a win-win. I'm blown away by this Era 1 locomotive. And it's a massive thumbs up for me. It's probably the best Era 1 locomotive on the market now. Hopefully in the future, maybe we'll see Hornby release the other, I think it was 12 locomotives that were based on um, this style of engine but it's definitely a thumbs up for me very impressed very happy with the set so guys that's it from me i hope you enjoyed the review sorry if it was a little long and hopefully i will see you in the next one so please take care and goodbye